Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi. We are very honoured on this occasion with the presence of the Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi ji, and we warmly welcome him. We welcome His Beatitude, George Cardinal Alanjeri, Major Archbishop of the Sero Malabar Church. We welcome Shri Arun Jaitley, Honorable Finance Minister, Dr. Najma Heptullah, Honorable Minister for Minority Affairs, Shri PJ Kurian, Honorable Deputy Chairman Rajya Sabha, His Grace Archbishop Anil Kuto, Archbishop of Delhi, His Grace Archbishop Andrews Tarath, Archbishop of Tirachur, His Grace Archbishop Kuriakos Barani Kolangara of the Faridabad Diocese, and Monsignor Sebastian Vadakum Pardon, Vicar General of the Faridabad Diocese. I'd now like to request His Grace Archbishop Andrew Tarath, Archbishop of Tirachur, to please address the gathering. Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, Your Beatitude, George Cardinal Alan Cherry, Honorable Minister, Arun Jaitley, Honorable Minister, Dr. Najma Abdullah, Archbishop Anil Kuto, Professor P.J. Kurian, Archbishop Kuriakos, Monsignor Sebastian, Dear Dignitaries, Bishops, Monsignor I, Fathers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen. I am really honored and privileged to stand before you in the presence of great dignitaries, including our Prime Minister Modi ji, in order to praise the Lord for having received two saints, two Indians, Father Kuriakos alias Chavara and Sister Mother Euprasya into the honor of sainthood. On behalf of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, may I congratulate it from the very beginning itself. Saint Thomas, one of the 12 apostles of Christ, landed at Krangano in the district of Trishur, Kerala, in the year 52 AD and shared the Christian faith. The Indians who accepted the faith 2,000 years ago shared it with others and lived in harmony through generations with local people of other faiths. Indians can proudly say that most of the great religions of the world had its spiritual fragrance in India right from the beginning of those religions. Unity in diversity and religious tolerance was the beauty of the great Indian culture. Arsha Bharata, our India, is a land of sages or sannyasis. We look with great devotion to all saints or spiritual leaders who show path to God and to Moksha, heaven. We are happy and proud that we have received two Indian Christian Sannyasis, Father Chavara and Mother Euphrasia, both from Kerala, who are declared saints for the whole world by Pope Francis on 23rd November 2014. These two saints are models of Christian contribution to nation building. Saint Kuriakos Chavara as a social and religious reformer of Kerala in the 19th century contributed in a big way for the establishment of educational institutions and media activities, of eradication of poverty and social inequality, and for religious upliftment as well as for religious harmony. Saint Kuriakos, as Vicar General, decreed 150 years ago that every church should have a school if the church 
It may be noted that when the population of India grew up, grew up from 1 billion to 1.25 billion, the number of Christians remained the same. Apparently, it seemed that the church did not only non-convert, but it lost its members. Our Vice President, Sri Hamid Ansari, spoke in Mangalore on 21st September 2014. Quote, our land is blessed to have almost all the great religions coexisting peacefully and prospering here for centuries. Members of the Catholic community are fully integrated in the national mainstream, and they have served the nation with great distinction in every sphere of life. The church in India is a peace-loving and peacemaking community who contribute to nation building, especially through, the, through our educational and Medicare institutions. The message of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, which is basically that of love, even that of love of enemies, has guided us to love the nation and work for its development, especially serving the poorest of the poor with the spirit of nonviolence and communal harmony even when attacked. Mother Teresa said, Blessed Mother Teresa is a symbol in this regard. It is a widely acclaimed fact that the educational and healthcare institutions run by Catholics, especially by fathers and sisters, are mainly in the rural sectors and have contributed much for the betterment of the poor, irrespective of caste and creed. Our educational institutions cater to rural children, which is more than double in number of the percentage of Christians. About 72% of the students in Catholic schools come from poor and low-income backgrounds, and they mainly cater to Dalits, tribals, poor, and girls. It may be noted that the church's activities in the field of education having prestigious institutions like St. Stephen's, St. Saviour's, St. John's, etc., had in no way any religious motive, no plan of conversion. Senior BJP leader Yelke Adwani once proudly announced that he studied in a Christian missionary school. Lieutenant Governor Najib Young studied in Columbus Hoss School and St. Stephen's. Honorable Minister Smriti Irani studied in Auxilium School. I can categorically state that our educational institutions are not run for conversion, but for the development of the nation for India. <laughs> Whenever there are natural catastrophe, sickness, or problems, we used to come to rescue the victims with our full might, although we have only limited resources. The number of institutions and personnel like sisters who work in the fields of HIV hospital, leper hospital, palliative care units, aged homes, etc. will prove the commitment of the Christians to the poor, especially to the deprived and marginalized sections of the society irrespective of religion, caste, and creed. As any other citizen, we love our mother India, and we are proud that we have a great constitution which guarantees its sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, and rep republic nature. <laughs> and we are confident that the governments will protect the fundamental rights, including religious freedom, of all citizens, especially of the minorities. Indian cultural heritage is characterized by unity in diversity. The Christian culture, which is 2,000 years old in India, has certainly contributed to the cultural heritage of India. The Constitution of India guarantees the protection of all cultures, including those of minorities. As is evident from the recent past, especially after the continued attacks on churches, 
the Christians, especially in New Delhi and in some other places, are living with fear and anxiety about their security. There are many challenges in religious witnessing in the contemporary India. We request the central as well as the state governments to take all measures to safeguard the fundamental rights enshrined in the Constitution and make the minorities feel that they are safe in our great nation, the secular India. We are confident that our Prime Minister, Sri Modiji, and all other persons concerned will take necessary steps in this regard. May I conclude these words wishing you every best and invoking the blessings of, of our Lord God through the intercession of saints Chavara and Euphrasia. Thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. The Siro Malabar Church is the largest community of St. Thomas Christians, also called Syrian Christians, who trace their origin from the evangelization work of St. Thomas, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ in the first century AD. The Christian churches in general practice their faith assimilating the cultural elements of the country where they live. Therefore, the allegation that Christianity is a foreign religion in India is not true to facts. We are, we are Indian citizens who love our country and who have contributed very much to the nation building through educational, health care, and social service activities. The Christians in India are only 2.3% of the total population, and during the decades of the two previous censuses, the Christians got reduced by 0.5%. It is against this numerically small minority community that somehow leveled the complaints of proselytism. The Catholic Church, as you know well, is the champion of religious freedom and the Catholics in India wholeheartedly adhere to this principle. The tradition of welcoming respecting and honoring all faiths is as old as India itself. As Swami Vivekananda said, we believe not only in universal tolerance, but we accept all religions as true. We believe that there is truth in every religion. Ekam sat vipraha bahudha vadanti. My government will ensure that there is complete freedom of faith and that everyone has the un undeniable right to retain or adopt the religion of his or her choice without coercion. Mine will be a government that gives equal respect to all religions. <laughs> India is the land of Buddha and Gandhi. Equal respect for all religions must be in the DNA of every Indian.